हेलो एवरीवन हेलो एवरीवन वेलकम बैक टू थ्री सिक्स डिजिटीएम जिस डोमेन एनालिटिक्स प्रोग्राम इट इज़ दी बेरी इट इज़ द सेवेंथ डे सिंस वी आर डूइंग दी डोमेन एनालिटिक्स प्रोग्राम व्हेन कम्स टू वेब बैंड मोबाइल एनालिटिक्स आई विल सिम विल क्विकली गो थ्रू व्हाट आर द थिंग्स दैट वी हैव डिस्कस्ड फ्रॉम द वेरी फर्स्ट डे एंड दी फर्स्ट � of machine learning when it comes to web band mobile analytics where uh, you know, the different different areas where we can apply the machine learning algorithm and we can improve the performance of the domain or if you want to uh, increase the sales of uh, different different uh, categories so we can use uh, we can utilize the machine learning algorithm that we have seen uh, and uh, uh, we have seen the different different applications you know using uh, machine learning you know they have improved uh, their profits range significantly uh, we have seen that too and uh, the very first uh, the second day that we have discussed about crisp ml methodologies so what are crisp ml q methodologies irrespective of any domain any domain uh we will be using the same crisp ml methodology those are the six phases we will be having uh, what are those phases and how can we implement uh, that phases when it comes to domain that we have seen and the uh, very uh, third day th third day we have seen what are the different different uh, algorithms we will be having supervised unsupervised machine learning primer what kind of uh, algorithm we have seen uh, we have seen uh, and we have uh, you know uh, in detail we have discussed what is supervised algorithm what is unsupervised algorithm that we have seen and then and the fourth day that we have seen and fourth day we have seen the pre processing techniques uh, when it comes to unstructured data and structured data what are the anomalies can be present in our data frame and how can we do the pre processing or how can we clean the data that we have seen and after that we have taken one unsupervised learning <coughs> we have taken one unsupervised machine learning algorithm that is k means and we have tried to do the uh, clustering and we have used one use case scenario and uh, one real time use uh, use case scenario and then we have applied our unsupervised machine learning algorithm that we have seen and then we have seen uh, one supervised we have taken one supervised machine learning algorithm that is knn we have taken the k nearest neighbor and we have done classification how can we classify uh, based using the machine learning algorithm that is supervised uh, using the knn that we have seen and the uh, yesterday we have seen uh, using the decision tree algorithm decision tree algorithm how can we classify different different uh, mobiles based on their features we have different different features based on that we have to predict which range that particular mobile belongs to that we have seen and today we will be discussing uh, the linear regression so whenever you are talking about the algorithm so you have two types one is what classification and then we have a regression so when exactly we will be using the classification when exactly we will be using the regression that uh, you you might be having an idea by the way i will go through it uh, quickly so when the data frame label data when you have a label or output is in the form of categorical when the label or output column is in the form of categorical in that case we will be we will be going with classification case and when the output data is in the form of continuous 
in that case we will be going for <coughs> regression in the in the regression we will be having different different types so something like simple linear regression and multiple linear regression that is also called mlr we will see what happens uh, when you have a simple linear regression what happens when you have a multiple linear regression and how linear regression works how does uh, you know using the linear regression we will be predicting the outcome we will see so when comes to agenda when comes to agenda of the session regression analysis how can we do the prediction using the regression that we'll see and what are the linear models do we have any other models or just linear models what are the equation we will be holding when it comes to linear model that we'll see equation of the straight line that is equation of the straight line we will be seeing and simple linear regression and what is multiple linear regression what is the difference between simple linear regression and multiple linear regression we will see and uh, when you have a non normal data when you have a non normal non normal data we have to do the transformation so when exactly we will be doing the transformation with the data is normal or not how can we see what is the bias what is bias and variance what exactly is the difference between those we will also look into that and we will be using one business use case scenario we have one use case scenario uh, predicting the price of mobile will be having different different mobiles for one uh, website i have to create this is the second uh, i mean uh, the website sell, uh, sells second hand devices based on the features will be having like when it comes to laptop will be having different different feature right ram and uh, what is the processor what kind of display we have so based on these features i have to predict what could be the price of that particular model we will see that too that is the use case scenario when it comes to linear regression linear regression means i am taking the multiple linear regression so this is the agenda of this session yeah. regression analysis regression is used to study the relation between two variables so whenever you are applying the uh, regression you should keep uh, one thing in mind whatever the dependent variable you are taking dependent variables means output variable and whatever the input variables you will be taking input variables can be any number of like x1 x2 x3 x4 these are all input variables it should be having good correlation with the output whatever the input that you are taking it should be having good correlation with the output then only whatever the model that you are building will be giving the good accuracy if you don't have any correlation if you don't have any correlation in between inputs and output in that case there is no use of doing the prediction it doesn't uh, you know uh, have any correlation in that case even though if you do changes in the output it doesn't impact the output in that case it is not possible to do the prediction so whenever you are looking into uh, you know linear uh, regression it should be having the good correlation when it comes to input and output what is the good correlation how can we quantify it all those things we will be seeing uh, in a minute but this is the basic principle when it comes to regression Now uh, these are the uh, different different examples are given. The dependent variable is numerical, but the independent variable is categorical. So when you have a output variable is numerical, but the independent variable inputs that you have is the best. Uh, you know it is to best use ANOVA. So or simply what what you can do, you can simply convert that categorical data to dummy variable. simply convert the categorical data into dummy variable the following are the situation where you can use the regression these are the example where 
you can use the exam uh, you know uh, regression testing of iq affects income iq is independent variable and income is dependent variable based on yeah based on the uh, uh, it is a iq is independent it is a input and the income is input. so when you have a good iq in that case you will be getting good pay good income or good salaries if you are having the good iq in that case you can easily crack the interview and obviously you will be getting the good pay so here you can say iq is a independent variable and income is a dependent variable so like that we will be having different different examples when it comes to regression analysis so before getting into the regression we need to understand what is correlation that is correlation like we have discussed when you have inputs x1 x2 x3 it should be having correlation a good correlation with output y that means whenever you form the scatter plot in between input and the output it should be having linear it should be having linear in that case we can say that the data is having the correlation good correlation with the output so we have other also also polynomial linear non linear curves also we will be having it just not uh, you know linear will be having non linear as well it is important to perform a scatter plot because it helps to see the relation between input or output before getting into the regression we have to go with scatter plot scatter plot is what it will simply show you the relation between two features when both the dependent variable and independent both dependent variable and independent variable are numerical we can represent data in the form of scatter plot if both are in the same numerical format you can simply use the scatter plot in this example the relation between the body fat percentage and the chance of heart failure is not linear and hence it is not sensible to use it here what happens when body fat and chance of heart failure when body fat is decreasing at one point it is reaches the minimum but if you have a, a body fat body fat less than that in that case in that case also there is a chance of if you have maximum i uh, mean you have a good amount of body fat in that case also there is a chance of heart failure and if your body fat is decreases then there is a chance of or uh, no chance of heart failure it will be decreases it it reaches one point where if you have a body fat less than that in that case also there is a chance of having the heart failure so in that case you won't be able to apply the linear regression it doesn't make any sense if you apply the linear regression like that you have done the prediction line this is your prediction line so the error rate error rate will be very high so it doesn't make sense to do the linear regression on non linear equation especially in this case and hence it is not sensible to use linear regression so how do we know that i have a good correlation or not based on what i can decide that yeah i have a good correlation so that i can go with the regression how can we decide using the scatter plot only scatter plot or scatter diagram provides or plots scatter diagram or plots provides a graphical representation of two continuous variables we must be careful that correlation does not guarantee the causation see uh, the one thing uh, when we are talking about the correlation it is not a causation 
So cigarette, cigarette causes cancer. Cancer. It is a causation due to I mean having the cigarette. It will definitely increase the chances of having the cancer. But it is not the only cause that you have to remember. It is not the only cause to get us cancer. You will be having other different different uh, factors as well. So here. Yeah, causation correlation doesn't mean it is a causation both are different let's say uh, speed speed increases and distance is also increases so in that case we might be having good correlation that doesn't mean because of speed increase distance increase it is not a causation they might be having good correlation but it is not Compulsory that you should be having the cause, cause and effect. You might be having your idea about what is because of this cause. This has this is happened. It is correlation doesn't mean maybe it might be some cases, but is not guarantee the causation. That one thing you have to keep in mind. So here you can see whenever you are plotting between x and y, or you can say y and x, you can see here. You will be having strong positive correlation since it is a linear line. We can say that it is having the strong positive correlation. And when you have a data something like this, it is a moderate. It is not having straight lines. Just <coughs> sorry, along the just line. It is not along the line. In that case, it is just along the one line. Will be, we can say that it is having the strong positive correlation. But in the case of this, no, it's not. It is not having the strong. It is having the moderate. Here we don't have any correlation since we can't see any pattern. The random random data. So here correlation is. No correlation at all, and then we can see it. Does, it doesn't matter whether you have a positive correlation or negative correlation, but you should be having the correlation. It doesn't matter whether it is positive or negative, but you should be having correlation. So here you can see it is also moderate correlation, but in a negative way. It is a negative correlation, and here you can see all. Along the line only, so you can say it is a strong correlation. And here we have curvy linear correlation. It is not just linear line; it is a curve. It is a curvy linear correlation. So how do we decide if that particular uh, no relation is a strong? Is that particular relation is moderately strong or moderate? No correlation at all. How can we decide? so we to quantify that i mean sometimes it might be subjective just by looking at uh, the diagram i won't be able to say that it is having 80% or strong correlation it is subjective in that case what we will be having correlation coefficient to avoid this kind of dilemma we will be having correlation coefficient it will simply quantify how much correlation we have into in features in between the feature so whenever you have a, uh, we'll be representing with uh, representing the correlation coefficient with small r if it is greater than 0.85% if it is greater than 0.85% we can we can call that uh, correlation as a strong correlation if it is in between 60 to 85 in that case we can say it is a moderate if it is less than that no correlation if it is having the correlation greater than 85 in that case we can call it as strong correlation if it is in between 60 to 85 in that case we can call it as moderate correlation like that we can quantify whether it is positive correlation or negative we will be using mod or 
so that whatever the positive correlation or negative correlation it doesn't matter whether it is positive or negative it doesn't matter it is a correlation we need to have a correlation irrespective of whether it is positive or negative so that is a correlation using the correlation coefficients we can quantify whether um, whatever the correlation will be getting is moderate or no correlation at all or maximum correlation or the strong correlation so linear model so what is linear model so you might have heard, of, heard about uh, the equation linear equation what is the linear equation guys by is it mx plus it is a line it is a linear line equation similar to to that we will be having in regular uh, regression in regression we will be having line representing linear equation in regression the relation between y and x is modeled in the form of in the following form that is what y is equal to a plus bx plus you can check it is similar to y is equal to mx plus here it is an error for us here we have a intercept intercept it is a coefficient coefficient and this is the variable it is a variable so it is intercept coefficient variable and error term so this is a predicted one y is equal to a plus b into x plus e here it is a predicted one and if you add error term the predicted one is equal to actual one so what is the difference between predicted one and actual one we will be having error only right but if you add error term to the predicted one in that case we will be getting the actual one. but i mean it will be the same actual and predicted will be the same if you add the error term so uh, in linear regression you to you need to have uh, no some terms here why is oh, these are the to i mean uh, components why is the dependent variable since we are doing the prediction using or x is the independent variable x is the independent variable or you can say uh, we have seen in the previous one right when you have just two variables let's say iq and the income so it is directly having the correlation when iq increases income is also increases when you have iq high iq in that case income is also high so it is a linear when you have just one independent variable iq is a independent variable here when you have just one independent variable you can go with this equation so in this case if you uh, input this values in that case the equation becomes something like this y is equal to intercept will be the same coefficient that we will be deciding based on uh, the feature you will be getting uh, when you are doing the regression model and what we have here iq b into iq here output is what income income is equal to a plus b into iq so this is the prediction that we are making based on this values we will be predicting the income of that particular category or person anything based on that particular iq we are simply predicting the income of that particular person so here we have just one input that is why we will be calling it as simple linear equation when you have just one input and one output i obviously you will be having just one output that is also called as a label output when you have just one input we will be calling it as simple linear regression 
simple means we don't have any uh, complex structure just one input there are e is normally distributed see uh, we'll be having conditions when it comes to error so it should be normally distributed whatever the error that we are getting it should be normally distributed means what it should be having bell shaped curve something like that we should be having a bell shaped curve on the left side and the right side distribution should be equal in that case only we will be calling it as normal distribution this can be tested by plotting histogram you can simply what are the uh, primary purpose of histogram to check whether data is symmetrical or not that is a primary purpose of histogram if data is symmetrical or not it will simply check what is the secondary purpose when it comes to histogram it is finding the outliers it is finding the outliers so this is linear model and when you have just one input we will be calling it as simple linear regression so whether data is uh, normal or not we can simply use the histogram or you can use there are different different uh, 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 plots will be having q q plots quantile quantile plots will be having skewness using all those you can simply find out whether you have a, a normal data or not so whenever you are talking about the correlation that we have discussed right it should be it can be positive it can be negative it doesn't matter we just need to have a relation correlation with it could be positive relation or it could be negative negative but we need to have a correlation so correlation ranges from minus 1 to plus 1 since we have both positive correlation and negative relation so it is ranges in between minus 1 to plus 1 so when you have minus 1 in that case we can say strong correlation in the negative it is in the range of minus 1 to plus perfect positive correlation in that if you have one in that case we will be calling it as perfect positive correlation if it is negative in that case perfect negative correlation so positive correlation will be looking like this here r is equal to 4 0.4 That means forty percent difference. R is equal to zero, no correlation at all. When R is equal to minus four, it is negative correlation. In between what? Why? It could be it could be in between independent and independent. For that, see, we have to find out the uh, correlation between independent and independent as well, and we have to find out the correlation in between. dependent and independent as well to find out how correlated it is if you are going for multiple linear regression and if you have correlation between independent variables x1 x2 x3 x4 and y here we have inputs 1 x1 x2 x3 and x4 and we have output if you have a good correlation in between input variables only it will result you know uh, changing the accuracy the accuracy won't be that good if you have a correlation in between input features only in that case we'll be calling it as collinearity when you have a correlation in between the in independent variables itself if you have correlation between independent variables to dependent variables that is good but if you have a correlation between dependent variable independent variables itself that means inputs itself in that case we'll be calling it as collinearity for that uh, to avoid that we'll be having some other techniques uh, it is not possible to cover in this session so we have different different techniques to overcome uh, that collinearity issue 
yeah ordinary least least square to find out which is the best regression line we'll be having ordinary least square let's say uh, we have taken just simple linear regression it is not possible to do uh, for multiple linear regression so i'm using uh, simple linear regressions only to just to explain how can we similar to that we will be doing the in multiple linear regression but we will be having dimension n dimensional dimension means number of input feature that you are using here if you are using just one input and of course you will be having just one output if you are doing uh, no correlation between them you will be getting similar to something like this right if you go for regression as well you will be finding something like that so these are the data points these are data points of x and y if you draw one line that is called as a regression line so if you are building a regression model you need to draw a line it is called regression line so how do we know that it is the best fit so uh, using regression what we are doing predictions that we are doing prediction how do we know what are the prediction that we are doing is uh, good predictions in that case error term we have to decrease the error term as much as we can wherever you are getting the least error in that case we will be taking that as a best regression line so we will be calculating the error error term for each and every line it is not just one line you will be having like multiple lines something like that you will be having multiple lines and then we will be calculating the distance between data point distance between data points and will be calculated what is the distance let's say this is actual regression the regression line regression line means the predicted line this is actual data this is the data and this is a predicted line so to see whether the data i mean uh, the whatever the regression line that we have drawn is it best or not we have to find out the difference we have to find out the difference between each and every point and you have to calculate the sum of all you have to calculate the sum of all for that we will be having different different evaluation methods wherever you are getting the least error wherever you are getting the least error that you will be taking as the best fit or best regression line wherever you are getting the which line like that we'll be have one more line and then we'll be finding the distance between these all points and then we'll be calculating the sum of all using mean square error or means uh, means absolute error will we have a root mean square error there are so many evaluation methods will be having using those we'll be finding out what exactly the error is wherever you are getting the least error that we will be considering as the best regression line so this is how we can do prediction how we can decide which is the best regression line so in order to test whatever the regression that line you are building or the model that you are building we will be having r R two value, R R square value. You can call anything. R two or R square. R square also known as a coefficient of determination. What is it? The it represents percentage variation in output dependent variable. Output means dependent variable explained by the input variables. So whatever the changes that you are doing in input variables, it should be captured by the dependent variables. percentage of response variable variation that is explained by its relationship with one of the more predict one or more predictor values Pred predictors means input one or more it could be just one case or one independent variables or it can be multiple independent variables it will be the same so higher the r square value the better the model fits your data 
so wherever you are getting the higher value uh, higher value of r square in that case we can say that uh, it is giving the best fit so r square value will range from 0 to 100 so if r square value in between 0.6.0 0.65 and 0.8 in that case we can say it is a moderate correlation moderate correlation what is the model that you are building it is not giving you the maximum r square value if it is greater than 8 0.8 that is 80% in that case we will be saying it has strong correlation it has strong correlation here we have a sum of the squares of residuals whenever you are calculating the error the mean if when you calculate mean mean of the uh, you know error is always equal to zero mean of the error is always equal to zero to avoid that we will be going with sum of the squares of residual sum of the squares of error sum of the squares of total so this mixture of both will be having the sum of the squares of total variation or you can say sum of the squares of total sum of the squares of residual plus sum of the squares of errors that we will be considering as a sst r square is equal to ssr by sst the what is the r square value that we are getting we will be getting with this sum of the squares of residual plus by sum of the squares of total it is a r square value so based on this r square value only we will be deciding whatever the model that we are building is a good or not it should be high so confidence interval will be having prediction of con con so confidence interval means what so whatever the uh, confidence intervals will be having if you have a data in this format whatever the prediction that you are doing it is having the best accuracy if it is not in that particular interval will be having that we won't be having we we don't know what could be the prediction if it is in this confidence interval will be whatever the data you are taking in that case the prediction that you are doing will be having the maximum accuracy if it is not in that interval we don't know what will be the output so if you have simple linear regression if you have just one input in that case we'll be calling it as simple linear regression if you have multiple inputs in that case we'll be calling it as multiple linear so here we'll be taking the multiple linear regression only when it comes to use case scenario so error error term so we'll be having some probability properties when it comes to error term the probability distribution of error term is should be normal so whatever the error we'll be getting it should be having the symmetric probability distribution and of course the mean of all the errors is equal to 0 the standard deviation of error is for all the values of x standard deviation the set of errors associated with the different values of y are all independent so whatever the errors that you are getting it should be all are independent these are the different different conditions when it comes to error so this is linear model here we will be taking multiple linear regression mlr <coughs> so what is the difference between uh, simple linear regression and multiple linear regression the same it will be the same but in case of simple linear regression we will be having one input only one input but when it comes to multiple linear regression there are different different factors that affects the output of the data so here we will be having just one input in the case of iq iq and the output is what income it is a independent variable and it is a dependent variable when it comes to multiple linear regression it is y and will be having multiple inputs x1 x2 x3 x4 so here we'll be having multiple multiple inputs to predict the output 
so when comes to use case scenario that we will be taking now it is a prediction of price for one website we will be having one website for that we have to do the prediction of what price of the laptop we have to do the prediction of up price up that particular laptop based on what features inputs multiple inputs will be having what are the inputs all those things will be uh, seen use case scenario this is the objective we need to uh, predict the outputs based on what different different features will be having what are those features we'll see in a minute so this is the use case scenario laptop price predictor so in order to import the data set what we need what we will be doing we need pandas in order to manipulate whatever the manipulation that we will be doing whatever the manipulation that we will be doing that we can use using the pandas all those things all the manipulation we can do using the pandas and all the mathematical operations that you can do using the numpy and matplotlib will be doing the visualizations visualizations that we have already discussed in the last class so what i am doing here i am simply importing the data set that is what laptop data so this is the data frame what are what are the features that i will be having a name company uh what is the feature i mean the company means what is the brand brand of that laptop type will be having different different right ultra book notebook something like that what are the screen size 13.3 15.6 we have 15.4 we have when it comes to apple especially so screen resolution what is the screen resolution ips panel retina display this is the screen resolution what is the cpu of your laptop intel core i5 2.3 gigahertz so you can see here ips panel display it is one feature and 25 uh, this is the display ipl panel retina it is one and display is one these are different different full hd ips panel retina display so these are the different different features so in order to make sense i mean whatever the data will be having should make sense we have to split those we have to split into two categories two features and here you have intel core i5 so this is one feature and 2.3 gigahertz is one feature intel core i5 it is one feature and 1.5 1.8 gigahertz that is one more feature here we have ram how much ram you have memory 120 128 gb ssd 128 gb flash storage 120 gb ssd so here we have ssds we will be having other as well flash storage so in that case here also we have to do the split different different category we have to create one for ssd one for flash storage cpu intel iris plus graphics these are the different different graphics will be having amd radeon intel so the price is also varies based on whether it is intel or whether it is amd we can't be taking both in one feature only so it is not possible what is the os os operating system what is the weight it is also determined how much price it should be so these are the prices that we have taken from different different websites and now we are building the model for one website so that we can simply tell what are the uh, you know uh, price of the particular laptop based on what features here you can see the df uh, shape here we have 1303 Entries will be having twelve features will be having. 
39-30 are the entries and 12 are features. And now checking whether we have any duplicates or not. These are the pre-processing techniques. There are so much pre-processing technique uh, that we have to go through. Uh, I'll simply go through it. I'm not running it. Duplicates dot sum. But do you have any? No. Null values. Do you have any null values? In that case, no. So here, unnamed column. I don't think that is needed since we have already have that index. So I'm simply dropping that. Now you can see. Uh, that has been dropped. These are the different different features we'll be having. RAM. I'm splitting everything. We have 8 GB RAM. So uh, whenever you have a 8 GB RAM, 8 GB RAM, whenever we are giving the RAM, in that case, automatically we can know right whether it is in GB. Sir. So if you keep that 8 GB in that case, it will become a categorical. In order to avoid that, I'm simply removing the 8 GB. A GB. I'm just removing the GB. That is what I'm doing. Like that, there are so many things I have to split. And I'm checking info. Do we have any null values? Don't. And whenever we have price, so this is the output variable we'll be having. That label call. I'm checking whether it is normal or not. Is it normal? No. It is slightly right skewed. If it is not normal in that case, we have to convert into normal. So these are the box plots that we have seen, uh, whether we have any outliers or not check. I haven't found any since it is very small data set and I'm doing the visualizations, um, exploratory data analysis to find out if, if we have any, you know, hidden insight. And we are checking correlation as well. Value counts, how many laptops will be having with this display? With this display, what are the different, different laptops will be having different, different displays. So I'm checking all. If we have small data set, in that case, we can simply drop it. Not necessary. Just one or two, based on that, we won't be doing anything. In that case, we can simply drop it. So this is the one more feature. The same data set and sample I'm looking at. Interest notebook here we have removed the uh, G, uh, GB so that we can uh, eliminate. I mean, we can convert this into numerical data. And here we have NVIDIA GeForce Intel. We have to create for each and every uh, one one feature. We have to create all those things. I'll be doing speed resolution. These are the visualization, these are the all pre processing techniques. And simply go through it. So we have taken uh, X and Y, right? It, it is 2550 to 1200 something. That is the resolution. But I'm just splitting into X and Y. And if you have LPS display or not, IPS display, sorry, IPS display or not. If you have, in that case, one. If we, have, if we don't have, in that case, zero. Based on that also, Changes the price of uh, that particular laptop changes. Everything will be having its own uniqueness based on that only we, uh, the price will change. Something like that. These are all the different different uh, pre-processing techniques. Touch screen if you have touch screen or not. If you have touch screen in that case, price will be higher. Intel Core i5. I'm splitting into different, different. It is um, gigahertz and whether it is Intel or something else. You can see <clears throat> these are the different, different. Finally, this is the data frame. Company name, type, whether it is gaming, notebook, RAM, and here we have a 26 SSD plus HSD. Here also you have to do something. If you do uh, all this pre-processing, you will be getting the final data set. So here, uh, whatever the uh, price will be having, it is not having normal data. In that case, what we have to do? We have to do the transformation. 
and I'm here applying the law of transformation. Here I'm applying the law of transformation to convert non-normal data to normal data. It is normal, right? You have converted it to normal. And I'm taking x into input and y is price size output. Target variable is what? Price. In x, what we have? Company. This is the final uh, data frame. Type name, RAM, weight, touch screen. IPS display, parts, per, it is a, uh, you can say pixels, CPU brand, HDD, if you have HDD, if you have SSD, SSD. if you have SSD, in that case, you, you won't be having SSD, uh, GPU brand, whether it is Intel or AMD, based on that also, price varies. And here we have an output, why is the output? And then I'm splitting the data into uh, input and output, and X train, Y train, and X test, Y test. Test size is I'm giving just 15 percent. Since we have uh, very less data, I'm simply giving 15 percent of the test data, and rest is per train. And importing linear regression and applying the linear regression using the pipeline. How much we got? R2 square is 0. 80%. So whatever the model that we are building, I yeah, can say it is a good model. And mean absolute error is about 0 0.2. Mean absolute error is what? To calculate the error term. <coughs> Besides this linear regression, we'll be having other models as well. Uh, to um, apply, I'm applying the rich regression so that you can find uh, which features are important. You can do it if you want to do. Uh, other than uh, linear regression, we have other uh, decision tree and uh, you know, uh, random forest also that performing way uh, way better than when it comes to linear regression. You can see here, random forest is R2 square how much? 88% and mean absolute error is 0 0.15%. So it is out of the concept uh, context. Here we are building the linear regression. That is a multiple linear regression. How much we got? R2 square is equal to 0 0.80. So this is a linear regression and taking one use case scenario that is laptop price, price prediction for one web website. And once it is done, we can simply deploy the deploy the machine learning algorithm into that website. If you want to know what are the um, what is the price of the new uh, whatever the uh, feature that you are taking? So these are the feature that we are taking to build the model. And if you want to do prediction on that, you can simply input all these features. What is the company type, RAM, weight, a screen? If you need, if you need a specific requirement, simply input all those uh, features, all these features, and then you can predict the price of that particular model. So yeah, this is all about linear regression and in linear regression, we'll be having simple linear regression and multiple linear regression. In simple linear regression, we'll be having just one input and multiple linear regression will be having multiple inputs. And of course, it is just one output. And to check uh, error rate or evaluation matrix that we'll be using root mean square error, mean absolute error or mean square mean square error. So yeah, this is all about the linear regression guys. I hope uh, you guys learned something uh, from this class. And uh, if you want to kickstart your data science career, uh, we'll be having tame Python session. So Python is very important when it comes to data scientists, uh, you know, data science program. So if you want to start your career, uh, simply go to uh, 360DG or you can uh, search Tame Python by Bharani. Bharani sir himself uh, teaching the Tame Python sessions. Uh, you can join those session and you can learn. It is a 20 hours program. You can uh, learn the uh, you know, Python from the industry expert. And yeah, this is all about uh, today's session guys. And tomorrow we will be having multi-layer perceptron. It is one of the uh, neural network.
neural. We'll be using multi-layer perceptron algorithm, and we'll be using uh, we'll be taking one use case scenario, and we'll try to apply in uh, multi-layer you know uh, in neural networks, and we'll be doing the predictions that we will see in the next class. And yeah, uh, that is it. Uh, I hope you guys learned something, and we'll see you in the next session. And have a nice day.